Good day, students. You are welcome to Top Form Education Associate, and you are welcome to Mathematics class. Well, today we are going to be looking at the topic estimation and approximation. We'll be learning about estimation and approximation. Now, the lesson objectives. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to understand estimation and estimate the capacity and mass of any given object. And by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to round off numbers to the nearest 10 hundred and thousand and you should be able to round off numbers to a given number of decimal places and significant figures okay so by the end of today's lesson you should be able to understand decimal places and significant figures now also by the end of today's lesson you should be able to use reasonable approximation to estimate answers to calculations and the instructional materials we're making use of for today's lesson is the essential mathematics for junior secondary school book one and the new general mathematics for junior secondary school book one now what is estimation let us look at estimation estimation can be explained as a rough or sensible guess of a value or calculation when we're looking at estimation we mean guessing rough calculation of an answer it is not always accurate but it can give us an idea of what the answer is okay so although estimated answers are not always correct they give us an idea of what the correct answer should be or they will give us an answer that is close to the correct answer it is useful to be able to estimate lengths weights or masses and capacities of giving objects now for example the length of a pencil is approximately 15 centimeters. The height of a man is approximately 1.8 meters. A bag of sugar weighs approximately one kilogram. Where this, where this symbol, okay, means approximately equal to. So whenever you see this symbol, you know it stands for approximately equal to. So this symbol means approximately. All right. Now let us look at understanding rounding of numbers. Understanding rounding of numbers. In reality, it is very difficult and not cost effective to give exact number of certain things. Okay. Such as spectators in a stadium, number of vehicles on the road, population of a town or a country, and so on. For example, during our population census, we make use of estimation and approximation because it is not possible to get the exact total number of people in a given city. All right? So we must estimate and we must approximate. Now, what is usually done to round up the numbers what is usually done is to round up the number or to approximate it to its nearest 10, 100, 1000 and so on. For example, if the actual population of a country is 100 million, 101,210, this number can be rounded up to its nearest million as 100 million. Just like I said, for example, you've taken the population census of a particular um, country, okay, and it's the figure are given as 100 million, 101,210. To get to the approximate uh, population of that country is 100 million. Instead of going through all these, you just say 100 million for short. Now, this approximate number is good enough and easier than the actual number, okay? I hope you understand. Now, let's learn how to round up numbers to the nearest 10, okay? We are going to be rounding up numbers to the nearest 10. On the number line shown below, the nearest 10 less than 38 is 30. Now, this is a number line. And this is the number we have to approximate. Now, the nearest 10, that is, the nearest 10 less than 38 is 30, as you can see. And the nearest 10 greater or more than 38 is 40. But 38 is more than 35. If you look at this number and you see that we have 35 here, 35 is the middle point between 30 and 40. And remember, we're trying to round upward 38. So, 35 is halfway between 30 and 40. So, we can say that 38 is closer to 40, all right? 
35 is closer to 30 and 38 is closer to 40. So if you want to round up this number to its nearest 10, what do you do? You round it up towards 240. Why? Because 38 is nearer to 40 than 35. Now, in general, to round up a number to its nearest 10, look at the digit in the unit column. I want us to take note of this method. Now, to round up a number to the nearest 10, you have to look at the digits in the unit column. If it is more, if it is 5 or more than 5, you round it up. Okay, you round it up, meaning you add one to it, you round it up. But if it is less than five, you round it down. That is, you just leave it at zero. All right, now let's take some examples. Round one, two, three, four to the nearest ten. Now remember, we have a thousand hundred tens and units, so we've placed it under the thousand hundred tens and units column. Now we said. To round up a number to its, to, its, to its nearest tens, you have to look at the unit column. And what do we have at the unit column? Four. We have four. And four units is four is less than five. Remember, I said if it's up to if it is five or more than five, you round it up. But if it's less than five, you round it down. Okay? So four is less than five. So we round it down towards to zero. So the number in the tens column remains the same so this number will not change okay because this is not up to five or it's not more than five so one two three four to the nearest ten is one two three what zero okay i hope you understand now let's learn how to round up numbers to the nearest hundred we are going to round up numbers to the nearest hundred now in this number line below the nearest 100 less than 353 is 300, and the nearest 100 greater or more than 353 is 400, just as you can see on this number line. So we want to round up 353. What do we do? 353 is nearer to 400 than 300 on this number line. Okay, so 353 is rounded up towards to 400. Remember, just like we did when we we're rounding up to tens, this is 303 is more than halfway through the number line. Okay, 350, 350 is halfway through 300 and 400. So to round it up, we move up. Okay, so we round it up to 400. So in general, to round a number up or to round a number to the nearest hundred, you look at the digits in the tens column. Remember we said we were rounding up in units, we were rounding up to tens, we look at the number in the tens column. But now we are rounding up to hundred, we look at the number of the digits in the tens column. If it is five or more, you round it up, but if it's, but if it's less than five, you round it down. Let's take some examples. Round one, eight, three, four, to the nearest hundred, okay, just like we did when we're rounding up to tens, you spell it, you place it under the thousand hundred tens and units column. Now, we want to round up to the nearest hundred, so we look at the digits in what in the tens column, yes. So, and in, in the tens column, we have what we have three, and three is less than five. Remember, we said if it's five or more you round up but if it's less you round down so three is less than five so we round it down so one eight three four to the nearest hundred is one eight hundred one eight zero zero i hope you understand now let's round off numbers to the nearest thousand okay let's learn how to round numbers to the nearest thousand to round up a number to the nearest thousand just like we did in tens and uh hundred you look at the digits in the hundreds column okay in units when we're rounding up to the nearest tens we look at digits in the in the units column when we're rounding up to hundred we look at digits in the tens column now to round up in thousands you look at the digits in the words in the hundreds column if it is five or more you round up but if it is five or less than five you round down now let's take some examples round one three five one two to the nearest thousand okay so we have we've, we've spelt it out in the uh, tens of thousands thousand hundred tens and units column okay so we said we should look at the numbers in what in the hundred column now the number in the hundred column is up to five so we round it up that is we add one 
to 3. As you can see, this is 5. So it is 5. Okay, so we add 1 to 3. So to round up this figure, 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, to the nearest 1,000, okay, we, we now have 14,000. Why? Because 5 is up to 5, okay? So we just add 1 to the next figure. So I hope you understand. Now let's look at decimal places, decimal places. A number such as 150.7158 is an example of a decimal number. The whole number part is 150 here, and the decimal part is 7158. The point between them is called what? The decimal point. Okay, so this is the whole number, and this is decimal point, and this is the word. This is the decimal figures. This is, these are the decimal figures. So if you want to call this, you don't call this 150 points, uh, 7,158. Wrong. Very, very wrong. You call it 150 point 7158. You spell it out, okay? So this is the decimal point. To find the number of decimal places, you simply count the number of figures after the decimal point, okay? Thus, this number has four decimal places. Why? This is it, one, two, three, four. We said to know the number of decimal places, you count the numbers after the decimal point. So we have one, two, three, four decimal places here. All right, let's learn how to round off decimal numbers. Rounding off numbers to so a specific number of decimal places. Okay, so let's learn how to round off numbers to decimal numbers. Places like whole numbers, sometimes it is useful to round decimal numbers to a specific number of decimal places or to its nearest whole number. So it is also important we learn how to round up decimal numbers. Okay, it is equally important to round up a decimal number to a given number of decimal places. One, look for the last digit. Okay, that is the required decimal place you are rounding up to. Then you look at the number next to it at the right. Okay, just like what we've been doing is the same thing. Okay, you look at the number at the last digit you have to round up. Then you look at the next number. If that number, which we have called the decider, okay, that number, we call it the decider. Why? Because it determines whether we add to the number or we it determines whether we add to it or we reduce from it. That's it determines whether we round up or we round down. Okay, so we call it the decider. If the decider is five or more, you round up. That is, you add one to the last digit. If it is less than five, then you add nothing. Okay, I hope you understand. Now, let's look at some examples, all right? Let's take some examples. Give the number 78.07526. Okay, and correct it to one decimal place, three and three decimal place. So we want to correct this number to one decimal place and three decimal place. All right, so in doing that, we have our figure here and we said you look at the digits you have to round up, then you look at the decider, that's the next digit to the what? To the right. This is the decider now, seven is the decider. All right, so... I've simplified it here for us. Last digit, that is the decimal place. We have it as zero, and seven is the decider. Now, seven, which is the decider, is more than five. Okay, so what do we do? Yes, we round it up. Okay, we round it up, and we said to round up, we add one to the number before it. So we add one to this zero. So what do we have as our answer? 78.0526 is rounded up as 7.78.1. That is to one decimal place. I hope you are following. Okay? So the answer is 78.1 at one decimal place. Now, we're asked to round up the same number to three decimal places. Now, in the same um, light, what do we do? We look at the number, okay? We look at the we count it one, two, three. This is the third decimal place. We look at the number after it. Remember, we said we count the number to get the, 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 the decimal place. We count the number after the decimal point. So let's count one, two, 
three then we look at the number next to it i will say the number next to it is what is the decider so if it is up to five or more you round up if it is less than five if it is not up to five that is less than five you round down so this is two and it is not up to five so what is our answer 78.075 is our answer at three decimal places it's very simple i hope you understand now let's learn how to round off decim round to round decimals to tens hundred and thousand okay now let's take the first examples give 474.4547 and correct it to a tenth b hundred and c thousand so what do we do we spell it out as usual we have our thousand hundred tens and units here so this is our decimal place so after the decimal place we have what tens hundred thousand and tens of thousand okay and tens of thousand so we said to know the decimal places we count the numbers after the decimal point so let's count this is the first decimal place this is the second one the third one and the fourth one so we have how many decimal places here four yes we have four now to round up a decimal number to the nearest ten okay is the same thing as rounding it up to one decimal place just like we learned uh just now so therefore to round this figure this figure to uh the nearest tenth what do we do we look at the number we look at the first decimal place then we look at the decider which is the number next to it by the right if it's up to five we add, yes, we add. And if it's less than, we leave it at zero. So it is up to five. So we add one to four. So to the nearest tent, we have 474.5 as our answer. Now let's run the same number to the nearest hundred. Okay. So when, whenever you are given a question and you're asked to round up a decimal or number to this, if it's looking like this 0 0.01, you know they are asking you to round it up to the nearest hundred. But if it's looking like this, zero, if, if it's looking like this 0 0.1, it means to round it up to the nearest tenth. I hope you understand. So we're going to round up this same number to the nearest hundred. Now, rounding up a decimal number to the nearest hundred is the same thing as rounding up a decimal number to what? two decimal places yes just like rounding up to tens means rounding up to what one decimal place so let's do it now four seven four hundred and four point four five four seven to round it up to two decimal places what do we do this is the number so first decimal place second decimal place i hope you are following first decimal place second decimal place now this is is the decider okay this is the number that determines if we are going to round up or round down so is it up to five no so we round down so we have our answer as 474.45 to the nearest hundred i hope you understand now to round up the same number to the nearest thousand we do the same thing we said it's the same thing as rounding up towards three decimal places so i want to take note of this whenever you see this it means you have to round up to the nearest thousand okay so let's do it 474.4547 um, is given as what 474.55 do you know how we got it now let's count our decimal places one two three okay so we have our decider at seven and it is what it is up to five in fact it is more than five so we add one to four and we have our answer i hope you understand okay kids now let's learn how to round up decimals to the nearest whole number we've seen how to estimate numbers round it up to some decimal places now let's learn how to round up decimals to whole numbers now to round up a decimal number to the nearest whole number you look at the figures in the first decimal place remember we said the first decimal place is a play is a number immediately after the decimal point so you look at the number in the first decimal place if it is five or more you round the number up if it is less than five do not change the words the whole number do not change the whole number now let's take some examples round of 13.73 b 
245 to the nearest whole number. Okay, so we're giving two figures here and we're asked to round each of them to the nearest whole numbers. Now, let's do this together. We said you should look at the number in the first decimal place. Okay, so which number can we see after the decimal point? It's what? 7. So 7 here is the number in the first decimal place and it is what? It is more than 5. So what do we do? We round it up. So it means we add 1 to 13. Okay? So we have our answer as 14. Therefore, 13.73 is 14 in the nearest whole number. So to round up 13.73, we have the answer as 14 in whole number. Now, the second example, we're asked to round off 34.245 to the nearest whole number. Like we said, you look at the number in the first decimal place. That is what? 2. 2. This is the number in the first decimal place because it is immediately after the decimal what? point. So, when you look at this, you see that this is not up to 5. 2 is not up to 5. So, what do you do? You round down. So, you add nothing to the whole number, okay? So, the answer in the nearest whole number is still what? 34. Take note, it's not 34.00, it is just 34 because we are looking at whole numbers.